This is a set of confessions, self-criticisms, criticisms of reactionaries, and yes, defense of me somewhat, and a defense of others too. First, I need to correct some false perceptions. I have never controlled Jason Unruh, nor have I used him as a proxy or a mouthpiece for my own agenda. I have aided and assisted him, wrote for him several reports upon his request and or the request of others. I have worked very hard to help him fix his public image. I knew, and so did many other people, that Jason Unruh has been for years the target of a coordinated effort by many fake Marxists and fake anarchists online to discredit him, dehumanize him, and scapegoat him. I did this because he was the one and only person who helped raise awareness about the things going on out here in the state of Arizona. Very real things, which thanks to Kara Stokely, a lot of individuals claim I somehow fabricated. It is impossible for me to have fabricated Midnight Productions. This trafficking group goes back many years, decades even. I lack the technical equipment, the transportation, the resources, and the know-how how to pull off such stunts. Where every interview everyone where every interview anyone has ever taken from a Midnight Production survivor could have been orchestrated by me. It's literally fucking impossible. I am extremely technologically impaired. I have to have help to edit pretty much any video I make or cut pieces from a video. I have a whole list of videos I need to make, which I'm, I, res I have to resort to asking Jason Under to help me cut and edit because uh, I've had a maze of uh, an amazing, terrible falling out with my wife. And I will get to that later because she was one of the people that started editing for me you know, after the falling out between me and Donna Newman. And I don't know what's going on with Donna Newman. I hear whispers. Uh, she disappeared from my life some time ago. I don't know what's going on with her. As far as I had last heard, she was around the pink purple girl and they were take and she and all the other anarchists were taking care of her. And by the way, the anarchists have pretty much boycotted me due to certain promises that I made that I believe I could have fulfilled, but I guess I was mistaken. I think Jason Unruh um, I, I appreciate Jason Unruh's defense of me uh, through these things, um, but I did speak to Dr. Weisfeld yesterday. He's probably going to self-publish, so for any of the anarchists hearing this, I didn't lie to you. I do intend to give you copies of the book. No, I can't afford them, so yeah, Dr. Weisfeld, if you really want me to have enough copies to give out, I'm, you may literally have to pay for it because I, I don't have the money for this shit, and I'm not trying to put strain on anybody here, but anyway, I'm getting back on point here. I lack the technical equipment, the transportation, the resources, and the know-how to pull off such stunts. Where every interview anyone has ever had, get, you know, had, had done any interview taking, you know, like any any interviewer who has interviewed a Midnight Production survivor, th these things could not be orchestrated by me. And you you look for it; it's there. It's fucking there. Really, what made it viral? Yes, was Jason Unruh. But he is not the first to talk about it. On a, on a YouTube channel, he is not the first to ever mention it. I'm not the first to mention it. And yes, there was an, there was an agenda by Antifa uh, people out here. And, you know, anti-fascist action to take down Midnight Productions. I would never claim that my group that I was part of, the Jewish Bundist Diaspora Movement, was the sole, solely the only one that was trying to do that. Probably the best video that you will ever see um, on Midnight Productions comprehensively is the video uh, put out by Red Pagan, Nicole. Red Pagan Corner, uh, now with their channel Red Pagan Network. I am extremely technologically impaired. I also need help to edit a video, cut pieces from a video, and so that I can dispel the literal slander that Car Stokely and her cult and her cult followers, like Gengaros, um, the middle class aristocratic white little bitch that Gengaros is, in order to dispel these these insane accusations, I'm going to embarrass the fuck out of myself. Like there's things I don't think people are entitled to know about me, but just to dispel this crap 
and the harm that this is doing to my family, that this is doing to friends I know, to card comrades that are far superior to me in their actions, I'm going to have to come clean with real shit about myself that really I never wanted anybody to know. I don't have a driver's license. I've never had a driver's license. I'm 39 years old, and I still don't know how to fucking drive. I... I lack a lot of life skills. One of the main reasons why I stuck with PSFM for so long and still stick with them is because they actually have social programs for the, for this. I am more aware of how to cook my own fucking meals and and um, wash dishes properly because of Comrade Broke Mom of PSFM. Now, let me clarify something. Yes, PSFM actually stands for People's Social Freedom Movement, and yes, there isn't a there is a plan to change the name because it sounds too much like. National Social Freedom Movement. Now, the history... I mean, Anarcho Syndical Boy had said it best. The history of PSFM, you could technically... Not to say it's as grand or as big, I want to clarify that, but you can technically compare it to the origins of the IRA. There are many different fractions left and right that were in there. Once more Demarchists poured into it, um, not only did we uh, kick out right frac factions. We kicked out all other leftist factions. It's exclusively Demarchist. The flag of PSFM was a flag that was designed by a man named Dion Gibbs, which we have hijacked from him, and I have no shame, and nobody else who, who was involved has shame for that. We are very happy to have destroyed something bit, built by a reactionary, because the flag itself is actually quite revolutionary. It's, it's a basically a, a, a fusion of a tree fist, uh, like, like literally, it looks like a fusion between uh, of a tree and a fist, you know, and it has a certain design around the circle. It's a red flag, and, you know, it's reminiscent of the card-playing games, which is the concept behind it, and to be completely fair to Dion, that was the idea behind it. It wasn't a fascist idea. But it, it needs to be understood that um, I left PSFM when I found out that Dion Gibbs had fabricated a person named Azam abdul Kim, and I want to thank Luke Dublin for the straight, honest interview he gave, and I don't know who leaks stuff to Luke Dublin, but he's a fucking genius, and he's he literally, like, he has people leaking all kinds of things to him. The Anglesis knows, as it is said. But, um, everything written by the name, under the name of Azam abdul Hakim is not actually written by Dion Gibbs. The collective that ghost write it for, for Dion Gibbs, Dion Gibbs consistently tried to boot out. Until finally Dion Gibbs, you know, created a completely different network of, of things because basically um, he felt, and it is true, that a bunch of Demarchists had hijacked his work and had used the name Azam Abdul Hakim to promote a certain archetypical idea of the international man. Yeah, see, this is why I had left PSFM. I only returned to PSFM when Comrade Number 3 became the head supervisor. Now he's the head of the entire PSFM. <sighs> now let's talk about this term patriotic socialism, but before that, let's get to this term patriotism versus the term nationalism and why I would say it's nationalism that's actually reactionary and not patriotism. And, you, you know, this is why I fucking hate Nazbulls and shit because they do they they appropriate anything that look, tries to be an alternative to Marxism and anarchism in an authentic socialist way and they do it because fascists I'm going to say it very openly fascists are always aware of the shortcomings and weaknesses of communists and they utilize that so anytime a legitimate socialist movement happens that is neither Marxist or anarchist and not social democrat fascists always target that more than they target anarchists and Marxists, because fascists, while they are reactionary and they believe in a lot of nonsense, they know that if if socialists were capable of reaching out to things that they people people in groups they know how to reach out to, that they would be screwed. I'll give you a perfect example. One of the biggest corrections made by the really serious communists is to reach out to the lumpen proletariat, and in many other cases, say, "Yo, no, that's actually the most revolutionary class." It was not always that way. Originally, communists hated the lumpen proletariat. And guess who took advantage of that all the time? The fascists. The fascists did. Now, given time, as time went by, you know, Marxists have corrected this. I mean, anarchists, 
You, you could look at the anarchist history, it may seem incoherent, but I would say that anarchist philosophy actually solidified in the 1980s. Many people would disagree with me on that. And that's fine. I don't fucking care. Everybody can provide their proofs to when and how and whatever happened. I don't fucking care. But patriotism refers to love of your country, okay? All right, nationalism is an ideology quite literally fabricated by... Georg William Frederick Hegel. It did not exist before him. And it was not a natural part of historical materialism. It wasn't. For if it had been, why is it that the, that the highest intense resistance was throughout the Arab world? They resisted the nation state ideology. They resisted it. They put their bodies on the line to fight off this colonial attack. And it was still forced anyway. This gets into another thing. While I and several others do not exactly disagree with historical materialism, there is a complaint by many people that it is way too linear. Linear periodization cripples your dialectics. It really does. This is not to say that people like myself or Dr. Weisfeld or comrade number three or comrade Luna or anybody else that is a Demarchist, this doesn't mean that we can't learn from you and that we should. In fact, I probably am the one that went out of my way the most to learn from communists because I, I understood that, okay, you can't throw the baby out with the batwater. There's a lot that they're right about, or I should say correct because I'm going to use the words left and right a lot here, so I should, I'm going to stick to the word correct. There's a lot, you know, that they have correct. Therefore, we should at least see what, what it is. And much to the disappointment of a lot of Marxists, I ended up adopting, while I ended up adopting a lot of particularly MLM positions, I never conceded to being a Marxist or a communist. And that's because it doesn't reach the truly oppressed. I know that it does reach the oppressed and I know it, take, it, it, it goes far, but there are a lot of segments of society that are completely railroaded over because their struggles are trivialized because of the necessity of communist theory. I'm going to give you a good example of something here. The Marxism in the national question, which does have points that are true, is ultimately wrong. I know I've committed the greatest treason by saying that, but I'll give you a perfect example. When they go, when they attack, nat and it's not cultural national autonomy, it's national cultural autonomy. The goofy freaking Bolshevik language there. Whenever they went after, whenever Stalin goes after uh, national cultural autonomy as he mangles as cultural national autonomy, he points to the social democrats. He never actually points to the Bundists. And it's, it's, it's credit, and it's never credited to the Bund. The Bund came up with national cultural autonomy. That was exclusively a Bundist idea. And there have been severe repressions to innocent people in the USSR. I am not saying that the, I'm not saying that Stalin caused a famine. I am not saying that Stalin killed a bunch of Jewish doctors or any of these other things that largely are sourced in fascist propaganda that is peddled by the CIA. And, you know, and it's not my fault that a lot of that Dr. Weisfeld himself had bought into. He has, a, for the most part, largely corrected that. But it should be understood that, you know, there's a guy, you know, on YouTube that a lot of ML, you know, uh, worshippers, you know, and fanatics are aware of. You know, his name is Hakeem. He talks about the USSR. and He talks about one of the problems in the USSR. He talks about, I, I believe it's his father, how his father went to the USSR and the Muslims in the USSR, like chased after him, begging to know the Quran and how to pray. Okay, this is unhealthy. The kind of psychological and generational damage that that causes is not something to be trivialized. And it doesn't discredit the validity behind the Soviet Union if you, if you point that out. It was the CIA's best way to destroy the Soviet Union was to point out this weakness because when they couldn't get away with lying, they would always fall back on this one particular problem the Soviet Union had, cultural genocide. 
Yes, if Inbull sees this, I'm, I'm, I'm sure there's going to be quite the... I mean, I, well, and say that thing. I know the communists are going to fucking trash the shit out of this video. And you know, I don't fucking care. I don't fucking care. But getting back to the concept of nationhood. There are soil nations that are based on culture and ethnicity. And there are soil, soil nations based on culture and religiosity. There are diaspora nations based on culture and ethnicity. And there are diaspora nations based on culture and religiosity. And despite the claim that Joseph Stalin made in Marxism and the National Question that the Jewish people have no unifying language, that's actually a historical lie, a provable lie. We did have a unifying language no matter where we were in the world. It was, I think it's pronounced yeshivish, it was our actual universal language before the Holocaust. And a lot of Native Americans reject that book outright. And do you know why? Because it invalidates them. It invalidates their nationalities. So, you know, nationalism, you have to understand, is the ideology of nation-state. Now, I'm not against black nationals, and I'm saying black nationals instead of black nationalists, because I'm not going to placate to my Maoist comrades here. There are plenty of black Demarchists that think that, that black people should drop Maoism in favor of Demarchism. I don't think that's ever going to happen. And the reason is because I think Maoism just suits a lot of black people a lot better. And, and that's fine. I'm not actually a sectarian. There are certain tendencies that I have no tolerance for. But this, this is just ridiculous. But I promised a long time ago that I was going to self-criticize, and there were several things that kept me from doing so. Uh, by the way, if you look at the links in the description, one will take you to Red Pagan, and another will take you to Jason Unruh. But it's time I, I confess some things. And I, and, I, and I can go further in, but that's not what this video is about. I can go further into details about things. But um, way before the PSFM factor, there were other Demarchists that had nothing to do with that. And, and by the way, um, it has never been settled among Demarchists whether we should use the term fourth position or not. Um, the Demarchist theory is sourced in something known as the Demarch, which is five different authors. That fifth one being Azam Abdul Hakim, which isn't an actual person, it's a symbolic figure. A collective of certain individuals who wrote stuff under that name. So, um, to understand Azam Abdul Hakim, you actually have to read the book Azam Abdul Hakim, which is very interesting. And I think that, funny enough, if certain communists read it, they would agree with some of it and probably disagree with other parts of it. But if you looked at it critically, you could not actually claim Demarchism is fascism or right wing. You couldn't actually do that. Okay, so, going further. It's time that I tell everybody what's going on here. Me and Jason Unruh and Luke Dublin, the Falcon General and Dark Snovia and Maxwell Glover, this is where it really starts, the, the, the Maoist Rebel News Network, uh, did not know how to start this, but we wanted to make a cohesive coalition. And we had a lot of ideas. We came to certain agreements, and much to my embarrassment, a lot of times people just look at me, because here's the thing, I have a lot of experience with activism in the real world. Yeah, I can't drive, I can't do a lot of things, but I'm really good at understanding personality types and which ones should be matched up with others. I understand how to organize an effective protest, what phrases to use, what to, at what point to march forward, and what point to march backwards, at what point to, you know, turn, you know, and... You know, a lot of people have called me a drill sergeant in the area, but I, but I just know what works in these situations. Um, I also know how to mediate between several, you know, opposing individuals in an argument. I'm also trusted amongst a lot of homeless people who are junkies because of the fact that I've never done this stuff. So I'm not going to steal their shit. I'm not going to take it away. I, I'm, I'm going to voice disapproval because that's just what I do. But I... I'm not going to steal shit. You know, one thing that really bothers me is that the lumpen proletariat, it's not true that they're all a bunch of junkies. It's a prevalent problem. But this is a higher problem. This is a higher problem in the aristocracy 
and it's more of a problem in the bourgeoisie than you might think, but it's actually like the, the, the nobody's more of junkies than the freaking middle class. I'm just going to fucking say that right now. The biggest users of narcotics like meth, heroin, crack, fentanyl, like the biggest fucking users of that are all labor aristocrats. Maybe some petty bourgeoisie as well. I want to make clear that I'm actually very grateful to Kara Stokely for learning from her, you know, um, but she's lying. She's probably on Discord. You know, I've caught wind of certain things that just don't add up until I start to add them up and I have to face the facts of what's going on. So let me tell you what really happened. I wanted Donna Newman off my back. She has, she has ruined my life, quite literally. I mean, that's kind of my fault, too, because I went along with her shit. But there were results with the programs she put out. Great results. So I figured, okay, well, she's older than me. Who the fuck am I to say that she's wrong? She consistently hid behind me, took advantage of me, and the worst part is, is I would later replicate this onto both Luke Dublin and Kara Stokely, and I will get to that part in a second. But when we brought in Connor Gillis, um, it was under the approval of Kara Stokely. Now, because we took a vote for it. But I really just did that, not... Like, I'm going to admit this. I don't really so much care about Connor Gillis. I'm not going to lie. I just wanted Donna Newman off my back, and I saw, okay, this is somebody that could work with Donna Newman. I was willing to do anything to fucking get that cunt off my ass. Because she's ruined everything. She looked up to Olin Tesla I think that's how you say it, uh, from the Machika movement. Now, there were actually two groups. There was, the, there was the Jewish Bundist diaspora movement, and then there was the Bundist movement. And the Bundist movement's full name was Bundist Movement, Jewish Liberation and Anti-Zionist Action. Just as the Machika movement's full name is Machika Movement, Nick Laka Liberation. Okay? She was clearly inspired by Olin. Tes Olin, everybody fucking knows that. And, you know, what I thought was all of those activists that made up the broader Bundist movement, which was exclusively her organization, I thought that those were rank-and-file members and that the Jewish Bundist diaspora movement was just operating as a vanguard circle over it. No, no, no. Um, she took advantage of the fact that I was constantly busy, constantly doing other things. You know, I never really paid attention, largely. You know, I had so much negligence. I never really started, like, really getting deeper into what the Bundist movement really was until my friends were killed. And, you know, the thing is, is I pleaded many times that I did not want to talk about the massacre because I could, I, I always figured I can never prove it. My wife did not want me to do so. Comrade number three did not want me to do so. Everybody knew it happened. But, like, how do you prove it? If it wasn't for the assistance of Pak Earl from the Lenin Mao Communist Union, the facts would not be known. Now, Pock Earl said certain things and statements that I don't agree with, per se, or I'm critical of, but I know that he was not lying. He, sometimes he just spoke of things the way he understood it. But ultimately, when we brought Connor Gillis in, that fucked up everything. And I do want to make clear, everything Connor Gillis says about Cara Stokely is a fucking lie. I do want to make that clear. Every fucking thing she's ever said about Cara Stokely is a lie. And here's the other thing. When we were starting this up, Mason was working a lot with us. But Mason Steiner, a.k.a. Red Scare TV, is, has actually put my wife in debt. Um, this is really what happened with all that. He said he would reimburse my wife if she paid for my trip to, to Ohio. And then he did not do so. And then when she says, well, you've definitely taught, well, don't worry about it, you know, because when he said he couldn't pay her back, she, she, she basically replied, oh, well, don't worry about it. You know, I, I, uh, I, I just now know not to trust people for their word. He took that as, oh, okay, everything's fine. My wife is still in debt over this. And this has seriously damaged a lot of, a lot of you know, long life plans that we had for our children. Now, many of you are probably familiar with Corporal Cat. And while we did try to hide this from people, it came out anyway at some point that Corporal Cat, my child, is queer. Now, 
that is not because we're ashamed. It's because we are culturally similar to Texas. And in Texas, if your children are trans or queer, the parents are immediately blamed for it, as if we've brainwashed them into it. This is a literal impossibility if you understand my cultural demographics. I could, I could not have possibly turned my kid queer. It's not possible. But I do accept them for who they are. I owe an apology to you, Falcone. Neither me nor anyone else in PSFM, which, by the way, we are changing the name. It's not going to be People's Social Freedom Movement anymore because it's a very problematic term to give it. But no, none of us, none of us meant to force you to stay in the MRM youth that you had been in. It was only encouraged because the more people would leave Jason, the harder it would be for us to platform people, which never got done. And that is the fault of Kara Stokely. And I'm going to, like I said, I'm getting further into this. <sighs> She's a left opportunist, a liar, an egomaniacal narcissist, and a manipulator. But after the Connor Gillis situation, things got seriously, seriously difficult. And then Donna Newman, you know, continued to make things difficult, never kept a single promise. Now you can hear her voice on the Bundist Movement channel. See, according to Carr Stokely, I somehow fabricate everybody into existence. Every freaking interview you see anybody give a midnight production of midnight production, somehow I'm behind that. I mean, from the mind of Carr Stokely, I have all this giant money and all the, these, these things, which anybody who is aware of me in real life knows just how fucking ridiculous that really is. But getting back on topic, you know... Oh, and Dr. Weisfeld's not going to like this video, and that's completely irrelevant. I don't owe you anything on this, Dr. Weisfeld. I owe you many things, but not on this. And I'm doing this on the wishes of several people in PSFM, including Comrade Number 3, who I actually answer to. I do answer to several Navajos. I do answer to these people. And the reason is, yeah, it's for religious reasons, because as Jewish people, we're supposed to be loyal citizens of whatever country we're in. And if we're going to truly be, and if I'm going to be a Bundist, though, that really means that I have to be, in, I have to be loyal to the indigenous. But in, anyway, it, it is difficult to get, but, my, but I, I apologize to the Falcone General. I am so sorry to you. Now, <laughs> Kara Stokely will have you believe that I, uh, that I groomed her or something because I mentioned, you know, picture this, you know, of, of her on paper being, you know, flyers being out there. See, the thing is, is that's what I was told by Dovin Mavericks, and I believed him, which I can't believe I did because... <laughs> I, 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 I stand back in awe that I did, but, but here's why. B-Level doxed me. Everybody knows this. And then the, the pictures of my children ended up on 4chan. The only effective black hat hacker that can hack into 4chan that I have ever known of and remove stuff is Dovid Mavericks. The same guy that screwed up Donna. I mean, Donna Newman was always a bit screwed up, but she was made much worse when she was the girlfriend of Dovid Mavericks who I now know has been trying to wreck me for years. I used to share my Facebook profile with him because he said, I would need to use this. I need to use your Facebook profile, this and this. And he did it to do a lot of strange freaking clandestine things that I, that, that I'm, that I, I still end up finding out about. And I have to say, okay, certain things that you see said with my profile, that's not me. And this Dr. Weisfeld is why I don't like to be on Facebook. Both of my Facebook profiles have been used by him. I have no way of getting into them. And I don't want to go back to Facebook. I'm traumatized by the, my time in Facebook. I can't deal. I can deal with a lot of things, but like I, I don't have to do things the way that you do with them. So I... When I had to deal with Don Newman, I could not psychologically deal. I could not mentally deal with it. So I had asked Luke Dublin to be my mind and Kara Stokely to be my heart in this regard. And in doing so, I, I didn't mean for this to happen. I ended up pitting them against each other. I didn't mean to do that. Now, some would say that uh, I manipulated them both. I don't agree that I actually manipulated them, but if that action is manipulation, then, then fine, I'm guilty of charge on that account. 
Dr. Weisfeld's like, well, I was uh, excluded from MRN. You were never part of MRN. You weren't supposed to be part of MRN. And maybe you forget how out of your mind you were back then because you were taking, you know, you know, legal drugs for something before surgery. And you've already disclosed that you've been in a surgery. So don't act like I've exposed you. And I'm not trying to be short with anybody here. It's just that I am now getting it from all ends. And... Uh, to the anarcho-cynical boy, I'm not a patsy. It's just that I'm trying to live up to everybody's standards, and all it has done is cause me self-abuse. That's all it's fucking done. And caused me to, you know, I, I haven't had time to unlearn the behavior that Donna Newman pushed on me, and I ended up replicating it on both Luke and Kara. Now, I highly doubt that Kara is going to self-criticize, and, and I, I'd love to see myself proven wrong, but I doubt it. I really fucking doubt it. We both, by the way, Carl, we both abused Luke Dublin. It wasn't just me. We both did it. And you know, when, when Luke Dublin left, because something had happened to him that I don't have the right to tell anybody about, he left for a while. I consistently tried to fix things between me and Carl, and she consistently verbally abused me, repeatedly gaslighted me, insulted me, made anti-Semitic remarks, and yes, okay, look, saying fuck the God of the Old Testament is a fucking dog whistle. I'm sorry, that's a fucking dog whistle. Um, you think you're chosen and stuff like that. I remember these things. Like, this, this is anti-Semitism. We don't go around saying we are the chosen people. That is Western Christians that do that shit. This situation between me, Luke, and Kara caused us to lie to each other. It put Luke in the most terrible position. Each mem each former member of the MRM network, and by the way, this N N Red Peg and Nicole wouldn't count because she actually came upon the time it was being it was collapsing, so she is exempt from all this. But during this time, we were constantly lying to each other. Luke would tell me secrets, and I'd have to keep them secret, and then lie to to Kara Stokely. Kara Stokely would tell Luke Dublin things, and she would have to keep. And sorry, I just misgendered Luke. Sorry, I. Luke would have to keep them secret, and then he'd lie to me. Um, uh, Luke would tell me secrets, I'd lie to Kara, I'd lie to Luke. The three of us just fuck it, it was just a circle jerk of us all lying to each other. Because of secrets. That is actually what happened in that whole situation. Luke did not abuse me or Kara. Me and Kara both abused Luke. And me and Kara both abused each other. But Kara, you abused everybody. I didn't, I, you know, take a while guess who had the least contact with the Falco general? Me. I had the least amount of contact with her. Everybody's guilty of something. Jason Unruh is guilty of negligence. Luke Dublin is guilty more than even me of people pleasing. No offense, Luke, but you are guilty of squireism. It's not just me. Squireism is a, a term that is more new, and it refers to um, placa over placating to gain approval because you feel that whatever you're doing is not sufficient in the eyes of others. I have squired for Dr. Weisfeld. And as I don't do that anymore, he gets angry with me because he's just used to me being a yes man. And that's not quite his fault. The man doesn't have time to go through all the stuff. The man should have more people with him in those protests. But he's alone. And this is, this is ridiculous. This is, this is so annoying. <sighs> Let's talk about what happened here. Many times Dark Stove Mia told me in confidence things that upset him, that made him angry about Kara Stokely. And I would beg him, please, will you tell her this? And so, because he never did, Kara has it in her mind that when Dark Snovia called out uh, uh, or, or criticized whether you agree with those criticisms or not. When he when he when he did this um, towards Kara Stokely, Kara is of the opinion that I did. I made her do this by. I I I made I made Dark Stovia do this by proxy. But I did not do that. I did not put Jordan up to anything. And it's time for me to also confess the reason why. Kara Stokely was made the line holder. And see, here's the thing. I, I wasn't a big controller. Jason asked me to do these things. Jason asked me to set up things because it was assumed because I was successful working in the real world, I'd be successful online. Nope. Turns out that that's not the case. And that's another plea I make to the anarchists. You know, 
I understand what you guys go through. I think it's fucked up that you guys have pretty much boycotted me because it's not in my control how that manual gets published. Dr. Weissfeld is going to fucking hate this video, and I, I really don't give a shit. I don't give a shit. This is not on the Boondist Movement channels, you know, and, and you don't control me, AB, man. I'm not saying that that's what you're trying to do, but you kept bringing me into your convergence group on the en encryption. When Dr. You, you got to understand, Comrade number three had asked of all Demarchists to leave the actual convergences that happened in real life, and we did. And I tried to tell you this. You don't remember anything because you're too busy. And because you often get fatigued. So I'm not really faulting you at all. And never in here am I actually criticizing you. But you don't get it. And I highly doubt you're going to listen to this video all the way through. Because it just sounds like ranting to you. Again, it's not a criticism towards you at all. You were left in the dark. But it's, it's not the way that you think. Jason Unruh owns the term Maoist Rebel News. That is his baby. Okay? And he wanted to network. And you were trying to, you would, you, would, you would see things and you would try to make what you call roundtable discussions. And we saw how this wasn't going to work. I mean, things have gotten a lot better now. Dr. Weisfeld's interviewing Steve Struggle. You know, he, uh, he, like, he's talking with Steve Struggle. He's talking to this wonderful Palestinian Ahmed. Uh, he's spoken to many people. You know, you can see it on his channel too. He's spoken to Luke Dublin. He's spoken to Kara Stokely. He's spoken to... The Falcon General. He's spoken to. Uh, um, I mean, he hasn't really had a chance to speak to to, to Maxwell Glover, but yeah, the, the the network was done around what was considered Jason's. You know what was in the best interest of what Jason was trying to do, and I didn't have like this massive control. I just managed it in the beginning, and I and I would I tried to step away every time I couldn't step away. It's because nothing was getting done, and people would ask me to like do more. The irony is when I left the MRM network, that's when cars started thinking I was controlling stuff even more. God, the fucking damage I have done to Luke. But, you know, I promised to self-criticize years ago, but now the criticisms have piled up, and, and it's because I don't want to get into my personal life. So understand this, and, and I don't fault you for this, for Falcom, but this is what you ended up doing. You dumped MRM youth on my kit. That's true. That actually is not something people are just assuming. That's true. The reason why my kid did it is because my kid believed in the project. The reason why my kid ended up getting away from it is because of a lot of health issues. And because the more this person you all know as Corporal Cat, which is not my genderqueer son's actual name. That is not my son's actual name. That is the name that me and Comrade Number 3 selected for this kid because it's a play on words on, on, on what their birth name is. Um, my kid was enthusiastic about it and everything, but when the details came to their ears about what this is going to tell, my kid jumped ship. And you know what? I wish I had jumped ship a long time ago. Because I don't, I think this, a lot of this goes back, and this isn't really Dr. Wise's fault, fault as much. He, he doesn't comprehend how things actually work out here how the Southwest actually works. I regret talking about a massacre. It happened. It definitely happened. Is it, It's just as much a fact as one plus one equals two. But what Dr. Weisfeld, I don't think you understand is that I would not have been able to do this without the assistance. Comrade number three later would speak about some of these things, but comrade number three didn't want me to talk about this stuff. And, and I, I'm going to tell you something. I have come to learn, and I suspect of this, that any time I try to call up Luke Dublin, he goes into a panic. This is what happens, A.B. This is what happens every time you contact my wife. It's not because you're out to get her. Or I don't want to clarify that. It's not because she particularly has an issue with you per se. It's that she feels used. She feels utilized as, 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 as not even a person, but just somebody that's supposed to work for everybody. My wife has been exhausted through this. Okay? That's what's going on with me. Yeah, I'm a guy who fucking can barely tie my shoes. 
but I'm really good with diplomacy. It's, it's just this weird fucking hiccup. I, I'm, I'm really good with diplomacy. I can work with people on the ground. I'm very good at it. I know a lot about theory and how politics, religion, philosophy, but I can't drive a car. I'm still ridiculously underweight, and I'm getting too old to gain weight. I have not taken care of myself because since 2009, and my, my son was so young, I, I never had time because I knew that the world that, as we see it now, was headed in this direction. And you know why? And people are just going to fucking go, oh, fucking boo-hoo, but it's because I'm Jewish. I, I know where, I knew what trajectory we were on. We are exactly where I was afraid we were going to be, and I have not, I, I, I wasted my life trying to change the outcome of something that couldn't be changed. And I've neglected my children and my wife. Because I get tired of it as soon as I know, as soon as someone knows I'm Jewish, I'm tired of being saying, oh, I support Israel till the day I die, bro. And me have to explain, well, actually, no, well, we oppose the state of Israel. Or, um, oh, you're a Jew, you fucking kike. I'm like, like that, that's, that's the shit I have to deal with. I wanted the world to not look like that anymore. And being the young idealistic fool I was back then, I thought that what I would do was somehow going to have an impact. My son has disowned me. And I deserved it. I do deserve it. I'm not going to refer for the rest of this video by the pen name Corporal Cat because the truth is my, my, my genderqueer son hates that name. Like I said, that is a name that me and Comrade Number 3 selected for them. Their pronouns are they, them, and sometimes alternatively he, him. My son hates feminism, considers it abusive, terrible for trans men, terrible for gender neutral people, or anomalies in my son's case. My son actually does refer to themselves as anomaly, which is, which is funny. I used to, it's weird when I look back at it, I think I always knew my son was queer. But I, I didn't have the language for it. And I didn't realize that this kid was autistic until way later. I should have known better. I, I don't know if people know this, but like, even late stage Gen Xers like me and my wife, our view of what we thought autism was is like the movie Rain Man. That's what we thought autism was. Autism is so much more than that. Neurodivergency is way more than that. But I, um, my marriage is falling apart. Because in the stresses of working with people who are, you know, constantly doing subversion and treason, it stresses you out. And sometimes you have to sleep over at other people's place just because I promised my wife the plausible deniability, which I ended up breaking that promise. My children are not Jewish because of me. They're, they're Jewish because of that woman. And I have built two channels that I'm not going to show people right now at this time two channels about judaism which is separate because when i retire from the politics i'm going to do what i really do i am an interfaith cleric and i don't want to get into all of that but <sighs> as i said jason henry is guilty of negligence luke dublin is guilty of squireism Kara and me are both guilty of abuse, but Kara, you haven't stopped. You need to stop. You are hurting people. Steve's struggle is as legit as it gets. You know, when people realized I was close to Jason, people would come to me and like, hey, can you can you do me this favor, this favor? Like, I, I'm not, I don't control Jason Unruh. I don't have the pull you think I do have on him. If I have that pull on Jason, then Jason has that same pull on me. I realized how, how isolated that he was. And, you know, after the massacre, I had to lie the fuck low. I had to lie low. And sometimes the only person I had to talk to was this one guy that everybody just sh shit on. And so a lot of people hate me because, like, oh, that fucking asshole net, you know, uh, 
he's not even trans, but he actually helped explain the trans thing. Well, I knew he wasn't actually transphobic. I knew that the trans people constantly attacking him were middle class. I was aware of this, and I showed him and proved to him that, yeah, there's trans people who are lumpen proletarians, and they fucking love you, and they, they, they wish that you had got, that they had got to you. I proved it. I, re I proved it to him repeatedly. The reason why you were never let around in the background car, Stokely, is because no one ever fully trusted you. I tried, but the fact is, is like, I, I wish I hadn't. So there's the truth. Comrade Net is a person who put radical politics before his family. Comrade Net is not the man behind the curtain. I support third world and fourth world patriotism. I believe in socialism. I don't hate communists, but I don't care about equality when what we need first is equity. I will never be equal to an English person. I will never be in equal to an English person, to an English white person. This is our reality. A Jewish European gets sent to prison. This has been said by others, but it's a fact. The white people say, you're a Jew and they'll beat you up. And black people will be like, you're white. Zionism is not a Jewish problem, Kara. You're full of shit. It's a Western Christian problem, if anything. It's not the same thing as Jewish supremacy. It's completely alien. Jewish supremacy is when we try to convert other people to Judaism, which is one of the reasons why we don't proselytize, is because when the Maccabees took the temple back for Judea, it wasn't Israel, by the way, everybody. It was Judea at that time. Israel was destroyed by the Assyrians. And then, to top it off, Israel is actually the collective name of all the Jewish people. But the Assyrians destroyed the kingdom of Israel. No country was ever called Israel since then. So, um, Judea, okay, was desecrated. The temple itself was desecrated by Hellenized Syrians and Hellenized Judeans. So the Jewish Judeans had to have a civil war against the Hellenized, the Hellenized uh, Judeans. And um, it was correct for them to take back the temple. What was not correct was the Maccabee dynasty that resulted from this, which was an absolute terrifying tyranny, which forced Edomites to convert to Judaism. And yes, these are some of, this is the very soil of Christianity. So I am sorry to everyone that I hurt, I am sorry to Luke Dublin. I am sorry to the Falcon General. I am even sorry to you, Kara Stokely, but I owe you nothing from here on out. I never want to speak or hear of your name again, ever. You're an anti-Semite. You constantly abuse me. You constantly lied. You constantly uh, gaslighted me. I, I mean, three times you said that one of the first things that I told you was that I loved many people. people. I've tried to go back in my memory. I never said that. No, I did say that I know what manipulation is, and I know that when we're in high situations, sometimes the instinct is, to, is for one to manipulate, and that if I ever at, do come off manipulative or do end up being that way, because that's what I've been taught by Donna, correct me, neither Luke or Kara had ever fucking told me, hey, you're manipulating. But that's, that's still my fault, though. But you continue to. I would tell you, Cara, I would tell you about El Salvadorians, poor El Salvadorians who believed in Bolivarianism, and you would yell at me and say, I'm not talking about American-born El, El Salvadorians. No, I'm, I was talking about, you know, people that migrated here that came across the border often illegally. These are really good friends. So, Whatever. There's a lot more to it that, and I can bring, and I will be bringing programs to explain a lot of these theories and stuff. And I will not be rushed. I will work on my own terms. I am not part of any network. I haven't been actually for some time. I, and by that I mean media network. I work on the ground. I've got work to do. Probably the person that's going to help edit me edit my videos is Jason Unruh. I have a pact with that man. We are best friends because I... I, I, I'm, I'm disturbed by the level of harassment this man went through. And I'm going to be on break. 
And when I'm on break, I'm also going to be working, but I won't be working online for the most part, except possibly to edit videos in the background and put them up for the Buddhist movement and for the two religious channels that I've built. There's so much I can explain. And I do hope that when I explain those things that they will be shared. As for this Comrade Net video uh, channel, this is a personal channel. I don't care how many subscribers this fucking channel has. I care about people subscribing to the Buntis Movement channel. And when I and when I when I reveal these two uh, Jewish religious channels, I care about them spreading. This is a very exclusive channel. Every one of you who is subscribed here subscribes because you like the fact that I upload stuff, you know, about Jewish anti-Zionists and, you know, basically make personal analysis that I'm more free to fucking trash mouth on this channel than I am the Bundes Movement channel. I'm really sorry, Luke. <laughs> <laughs>